Make some noise. Adidi, Adidi. So, with no further ado, the next speaker, I told you we're going international, guys. All the way from Nigeria. So, listen, this man has about 10 qualifications, including a master's in communication research and a certificate in wine. Did you know that you could get a, a certificate in wine? I did not either. So, sir, we need to speak after this. You and I. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> But, and he's currently learning Mandarin at the Vet Language School. Yeah, I know, I know. So, tonight, please help me welcome telling us a story on a short trip that was not quite as short as he thought it would be, all the way back home to help a friend. Please help me welcome to the Haditia stage, Mr. Aditunji Omotola. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my story is uh, about my 35 days in Lagos. 35 days in Lagos, the most populous uh, province in Africa. I got a call from my brother, whom I went to university many years ago with. And he called me and says, Tunji, my name is Ade Tunji, but people call me Tunji. I don't like people calling me Ade, because Ade is too common. But anyway, well, Adi means crown in Yoruba, so it's a good thing, actually. But anyway, so he calls me and says, Adi Tunji, I know you're very interested in politics. You always talk about politics. I'd like you to help my sister. She's running for governor of Lagos. I said, what? Governor of Lagos. <laughs> okay, governor of Lagos. All right. So anyway, so I said, well, so how do we do this? I'm in Johannesburg. You're in Lagos. Your sister is running in Lagos. I'm in Johannesburg, how do we do it? She said, what do we do? I said, okay, you've got to fly me in. I tried it, I said, fly me in. I thought he would say no. Then he said, okay, what, what will it cost? And I told him in Naira, and he said, okay, we'll do it. Then I said, you've got to put me up in a place to stay because I can't, you know, be staying with someone or whatever. So he said, okay, no problem. So I said, I'll give you a figure. So I called the Southern Sun. I sent an email to about 10 people in Southern Sun that I know. They have a property in Lagos. So they gave me a discount of about $100. I was so excited. I'll be able to meet all the powerful guys that drive the Ferraris into the property. But then my friend said, no, 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 it's too expensive. We've got a place for you. It's two doors away from the governors because they're now calling the lady governor, even though she's not governor. Nigerians are very ambitious. Anyhow. So, oh no, it's two doors away when you get in. So we got to Lagos. When we got to Lagos, he picked me up at the airport and said, hey, my brother, you know what? I'm taking you to another hotel because that hotel um, is too expensive. I said, okay, fine. So we got to this hotel about two, two kilometers away. On our way to the hotel, there were people selling fish, they were selling clothes, they were selling all sorts of things. So I didn't really enjoy the drive there, but the beautiful thing was that when I got into the hotel, everything was nice. So I said, okay, fine. But that evening as I went into the hotel, I saw so many women of easy virtue. Uh, you know, they were everywhere. They were with their nice weaves and they were looking great, you know? But I thought, hey, how do I survive in this hotel? So anyway, so I was there for five nights. But the following morning, I went to meet Her Excellency, 62-year-old female, 35 years of the Central Bank, retired. She's a pastor at the Fountain of Life Church, and she was now running our own events company. So I was very um, excited to meet her. She was happy to see me. I was very resplendent. I was wearing my full African gear, and I was speaking like Obama. <laughs> Your Excellency, good to meet you. We decided to be on this campaign. Run, Lara, run. So we gave her run, Lara, run. And she said, oh, it's so good to see you as well. So then I was a bit worried that why are we meeting her at home? Why are we not meeting her at the office? We're at the campaign office. She was running under the platform of the PPC, not the Pretoria Portland Cement. This is the Providence People's Congress. They don't have any money. They want to run for governor. Their, their posters are few, but they have t-shirts, they have passion, they're praying all the time, 
the people of faith, but in Nigeria, faith alone can win the day. You need to be like Dan Goethe. Anyway, so I said to the lady, so now that I'm on your team, so what are we going to tell the electorate? What's the message? Well, I want to fix traffic in Lagos. I want to do education. It didn't mean much to me because I knew that in Nigeria, there's, in Lagos, there's a lot more problems. So I said, Madam, have you thought about health care? He said, yeah. In fact, I normally go to these hospitals to try and release uh, young women who have gone through some ailments, but they don't even have like 200 rand. They won't discharge them, so I'll pay for them. We do that as part of our church. We do this outreach. I said, okay, madam, let's go to the hospitals. So we went to the first hospital. It was very, very interesting. Four generators. You guys are crying about low shedding. You, laugh. you make me laugh. South Africans are laugh. They make me laugh. No shedding. They give you notice that they're going to shed your nose and your sick one. In Nigeria, nobody gives nobody any notes. You just hear, pa! Then you know you are no shedding. Then you start looking for candles or knock people down on your way to find them the candle. Then you look for the matches for another hour. There's no lighter. We don't have a lot of lighters in Nigeria. We have matches, and you you have to you know use the uh, match stick on the box. But anyway, so when we get to the hospital, four generators, only one was working, but there was no uh, premium motor spirit. There was no petrol. So the hospital, this is the best, well, flagship community hospital, what they call primary health centers, but there is no fuel. So the laboratory does not have fuel. Um, people are sweating like chickens. Um, you know, some people were doing brisk business, you know, selling maguena in a nice show glass. We call it a show glass, so you can see the maguena glittering in the show glass. And I said, wow, this is really interesting. So we went to the municipal uh, building, and when we got there, it was different, just about a kilometer away. And these guys were living large. They had an ambulance that cost about 500,000 rand. They're so proud to show me the, the old little clinic that was air conditioned. So I said to them, where's the chairman of this uh, municipal? And they said to me, the chairman has gone to a, a political meeting. She wouldn't be there. Somebody was banging. They were making a bulletproof door for the chairman. The contrast between the hospital and the municipal office, I thought it should be the reverse. But anyway, we're in Lagos. Things don't always... It's not always normal, you know, people do things differently. So, right there, I got a sense that we need to make healthcare the most important issue because there are 30 million people in Lagos. The traffic, people are always stressed out. You know, you, you can buy half of ShopRite in the traffic in Lagos. You can buy clothes, you can buy shoes, you can buy a coffin, you can buy even an aircraft. Nigerians are very, very resourceful. So, anyway, so I then went back home. To, with the with our excellency, I said, Madam Excellency, I need to interview you. Let me treat you like a subject. So I interviewed her, and while I was interviewing her, I then found something that I could hold on to. She had received 17 medals as a sportswoman when she was in university, and she never spoke about it. 17 medals in 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters, and even the relay. I said, Madam, this is the story we need to tell that you have contributed to the development of Lagos State through sports. But even then, even though I said that to her, she was still in trepidation because she didn't have enough money. She wouldn't be able to get interviews. Because as women, women in Nigeria, they're very, they're, even though 47% of the population are women, in the political space, those who were running for Lagos State Governor, 42 people, four of them were women. And they were in smaller parties, almost like the Mampele Rampele situation where you know you're almost like a spaza shop in the politics of time so I guess the woman now said to me Tunji what do we do I said madam we have to make a lot of noise we have to behave like a Julius man we don't have cash but we make noise so we started to so we started to go around the state but we didn't have money then we did a rally because what happened was when I left Johannesburg on the 13th of January it was the anniversary of Gilchrist Olympio. The murder of the first Togolese president in 1963 it was January 13. And then I went through Nairobi. And when I landed in Lagos, it was January 15. And that was a coincidence with the murder of the first prime minister of Nigeria, Alaji Abubakar. 
Tafar Balewa. So I was trying to keep in step with these political uh, gladiators. So I said to the woman, I think history is on our side. Let's use the spirit of Balewa and Olympio to move your campaign. But what we found that at every point that we went to, there were obstacles. People said to us, why are you running for governor? Why are you not running for councillor? running for Senate. But the woman said, after 35 years, I've been married for 35 years, I've been in the bank for 35 years, I believe I have the skills to run for governor. But two weeks later, her money ran out. And I was very concerned because I was staying in the hotel. And the lady said, Twinji, you're such a great guy. Come and join us in our penthouse. And I'm thinking, hmm. I'm not very good at staying with people. I know Africans would like to stay with each other and look at each other's faces. But <laughs> having been in England for 10 years, we've been weaned off the idea that one should stay with one another because I don't want to be worried about buying food or you know, doing calculations as to who drank the milk <laughs> and who ate the cheese and you were coming in at 2 a.m. <laughs> Why are you banging on my door at 2 a.m.? So we, le we learn every day, right? So anyway, so I, qu I quietly declined and politely declined the offer, but it was tempting though. So I said, how do I survive? Because we haven't even, the elections are on the 9th of March. So I said, what do I do? So I called a friend of mine. He has a boat in Lagos. Tuji, wait there, wait there, wait there, wait there. Are you in Lagos? Come, come, come. He has a 35 bedroom hotel. But what I did not realize that even though I was worried about the women of easy virtue, where I was, when I got to my friend's place, it was a colony of women of his <laughs> And he was, he was encouraging them because he needed to keep his rooms full. But the beauty about the place was that we went fishing, we went boating, we drank lots of champagne, we listened to Davido every night, or whiskey. We even had the opportunity, because it was Black History Month, to watch Malcolm X and Luther King and uh, Maya Angelou. So it was even, even though I was part of a political campaign, I was, you know, downsized to lifestyle through my friend's opportunity. And I told the madam, I said, madam, you need to loosen up a little bit. You're a pastor, you're a banker. Come and chill out with the boys, man, so that they can give us money. I ah, know, I can't be seen in those kind of places. So anyway, so while I was sad that the women didn't have money, and all the campaign rallies took their toll because I had to sit in traffic, go through a toll gate, and then climb the bridge, the, what they call the third mainland bridge, which is about 26 kilometers, that takes you to the mainland of Lagos. I was safe in the knowledge that at the end of the day, I'll be on a boat, I'll be eating some grilled fish, I'll be listening to Davido, and I'll be able to enjoy my friend's company because my friend is really into lifestyle. So what I took from this woman's story was that even though she only got 600 votes, in Nigeria, there's a saying, where people run for president, they know they're not gonna win, but they want to be visible. And once you say, I am the former presidential candidate, <laughs> you say, Oga, Oga, now Wow, president. So the moral of my story is that women in Africa can do it. This woman is a great woman, even though she only got 600 votes. Yeah. Her story has now been told because she was on the BBC. She was on many platforms. She sat on the same platform with presidential, ca sorry, governorship candidates. And as I was leaving on the 35th day, I realized that it was also coincided with the fact that the woman had been married for 35 years and she had also been in the bank for 35 years. That was my 35 days in Lagos. I enjoyed it so much. I thank you.